Hey, Al. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. Let's see if we can get to a little bit of that light away. There we go. Hope you are well today. Happy Thanksgiving or day after for those uh, <laughs> that are catching this live or close to live. And I hope you enjoyed your holiday, your holiday weekend, and uh, all the leftovers. We didn't didn't have any because we went <laughs> we went to friend's house and so they cooked. Um, all right. So uh, this is something I've been uh, working on for a little bit, and I uh, want to talk a little bit about our friend, uh, Brushy Bill Roberts. So, uh, and, and the, the title is the th <laughs> Brushy's Three Options. Um, before I do that, I got to take care of other business. Thanks so much to everybody that have ordered the Back to Billy trilogy, at least the first three books in the trilogy. Still a few sets left. The, uh, just the order link is in the video description, so you can just click on there, order it, all three, signed by the author of me, um, 31, uh, 41 bucks, uh, U.S. only. And um, the second editions will be heading to Amazon uh, over the next couple months. So um, if you want a first edition, now's your time. All right. So let's talk about Brushy. Here, I, I, I'm going to share part of a, a letter with you, <clears throat> and... Uh, but I want to wait a little bit on that. Here's the thing. Somebody asked me the other day, because I get a lot of messages from folks. They said, okay, Michael, but why would Brushy Bill risk his life? He could be hung. He could be arrested. He could be shot. Um, you know, he could be executed for his crimes uh, by going to Governor Mabry. And uh, why would he risk that unless he was really Billy the Kid? And my answer to that is going to be the same as I always give you. I have no idea why he would do that, um, but it at least demands a little further investigation. Um, the, the, here's the thing. If Brushy was Billy the Kid, uh, the uh, statute for his crimes would have, uh, would have run out in 1894. Yes, even then, the statute uh, or the statute of limitations for first degree murder uh, would have run out by before 1900. So he would not have been, um, now he could have been charged with the crimes of killing Bell and Ollinger, but still same, same thing that the, uh, the, the crime would have taken place too long ago to prosecute for it. That's not the case nowadays. First degree murder in every state in the union that I'm aware of is a crime, uh, that has no statute of limitations. Um, and so it could be 50 years ago and you, if you were caught, you could still be charged. Um, but not so in the old territorial days of New Mexico. But I don't even know that his uh, that his people would know that. Uh, one of the important things to know is that the law firm in El Paso uh, that uh, was setting, they were only hired, according to them, uh, and I'll share the articles with you, to set the meeting up with Governor Mabry. They did not represent Brushy at the meeting. Uh, he was represented by William Morrison, who was not an attorney. So Morrison was there as his advisor, his friend, his confidant, but he was not an attorney. And no one from the El Paso law firm uh, was part of that um, uh, part of that meeting. They were very clear. We were just engaged to be the go-between to set the meeting up, discuss the terms, etc. So why would Brushy Bill? do this. Again, I don't know, but we can speculate uh, a few things. First of all, he could have actually been Billy the Kid, and he could be looking to absolve himself of his crimes and maybe get the pardon he felt that he absolutely deserved before he died. Um, Brushy said he was 91, birth records, and his own testimony in submitting articles to newspapers had him you know, anywhere between, uh, you know, uh, 71 and uh, 81 or 82 years old. Um, so, or 88 years old, I guess. So there's a number of different birthdays that were bandied about then. So a number of different ages he could have been, but, but let's say he was 91. Well, that's a pretty old guy. Um, that's a guy that probably understands getting near the end of his life. And uh, probably if that's the case, wants to get rid of the, the burden, you know, the, the kind of the mental burden of being a convicted murderer and having a, uh, uh, you know, having a, a, a death sentence on your head. So that's one thing. But the other thing is maybe Brushy wasn't Billy the Kid. I don't believe he was. 
Uh, and so there really isn't any danger in going before Governor Mabry, because even if you convince Mabry that you're Billy the Kid and Mabry says, hey, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not pardoning you. We're going to we're going to, you know, uh, fulfill your your uh, your death sentence. Then you could just go, oh, well, guess what? I'm not Billy the Kid. Here's you know, here's the proof, you know, and here's my birth certificate or the family Bible. And, you know, it was all a joke. Sorry about that. In other words, there'd be very little risk of being hung, shot, whatever they would do, uh, even if there was not a statute of limitations. But there'd be very little risk of that uh, because you you aren't actually the person. You can say you're anybody. You could say you're Adolf Hitler, as distasteful as that is. Um, and But nobody is going to prosecute you for war crimes and execute you because you're not Adolf Hitler. And you could just say, hey, sorry, joke. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the, the, the answer is... Um, you have to believe one way or the other that either Brushy was Billy and he wanted that uh, he wanted that uh, that that stain, I guess, gone. Or you have to believe Brushy wasn't Billy. And for whatever reason, he wanted to be thought of, recognized as Billy the Kid. Uh, and as such, he uh, he really had no there was no danger. Right. If he convinced Mabry that he was the kid and, and Mabry wanted to uh, hang him, then he could say, well, I'm not. And here's some proof. And if he didn't convince Mabry, which he didn't, then, of course, there was no proof anyway. And Mabry didn't believe him. So, of course, they didn't go after Brushy, even though there was no legal basis by that point to do so. So it led me to think of the three things, three things, three things um, that could be or that the only three things that could be true in this case. The first one, the first one <laughs> is that brushy Bill Roberts was actually Billy the Kid, right? In other words, that is a possibility that must be considered that he was Billy the Kid. And so he pursued his, you know, changing, not changing, but uh, regaining his identity because that's who he really was. The second one is that he was lying. For whatever the reasons are, and you could speculate all day long that Brushy Bill lied and why. In fact, I saw a YouTube video that Brushy Bill Roberts is a lying liar or something. I didn't watch it, uh, but uh, but you could just say he lied. He wanted the notoriety. He wanted the fame. He wanted the infamy. He wanted whatever he wanted. There'd be a reason to do that. But there's a third possibility, third possibility, and that's the one I want to introduce you to today. Um, so uh, Don, uh, Donald Klein is, uh, or was, Don, Don has passed on, uh, an author and a researcher of Billy the Kid. I'm going to share, pulled up this on Amazon. And uh, I've quoted a couple passages out of a letter I have from Don. Um, here's one of Don's books, Alias Billy the Kid, not to be confused with Alias Billy the Kid by C.L. Sonishin, uh, The Man Behind the legend. Um, I have read this book. I don't have it anymore. I read it a long time ago. And, uh, but, but Don wrote this, he wrote Antrim and the kid. He wrote, uh, another one, I guess, I think it was, uh, on Sheriff Brady, but, um, in any event, so Don is a, a historian, uh, was a historian, uh, was a, uh, uh, was kind of an ardent researcher. Um, and unless you think that Don is trying to protect uh, big history, <laughs> as uh, Bloody James calls it. Um, uh, Klein, ex uh, Donald Klein exposes Billy the Kid as a cowardly crook who did not hesitate hesitate to kill for money. So Donald Klein, and I never met Donald, um, was not a guy who was <clears throat> firmly in the camp of, hey, Billy's this uh, great guy, this freedom fighter is fighting for justice, uh, any of those type things. Uh, he did not have a high opinion of Billy the Kid. Uh, and uh, this book was written back in, uh, uh, this is republished in 2016. But I think the book was actually written in 1990, uh, if memory serves me correctly. So uh, Don, when I when I mentioned him in the past, you should know who he is and you can look up his books on Amazon. Um, I don't remember much about this one because it really was, it had to be 25 years ago that I read it. Um, but in any event, there it is. So that's Don Klein. 
So I have a letter that he sent. I can't show you the whole letter. Um, and the person that received it does not want to be identified. You know, many people <laughs> want to keep their distance from this, this madness or this nonsense. Um, but this is part of the letter, just a little passage, a few sentences that really caught my eye and made me question some things. And so I'm going to share those with you and I will read it along with you. And here we go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Now he says he was born in Texas, meaning brushy, and his both parents in Kentucky. So the mental disability began just before 1910. I want to stop there for a second. Um, if you've seen any of Gail Cooper's videos, she talks a lot about brushy's uh, mental illness. Um, I've, I've heard her say that term a lot. I haven't, I've probably missed because there's, I don't know, she's got 150 videos. Um, and at least to me, they're, they're a little difficult to get through sometimes, but, uh, but she's talked about a mental illness, but I've never seen her get specific about what she was talking about. You, you could probably surmise anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't know that Gail and Don ever had any uh, interaction. I just don't know. Um, I don't know that they worked together or that they had any idea that each other existed. Um, but let's continue reading because this was the part that really got me. I checked with psychiatrists and they stated he suffered from what medical science calls delusional paranosis grandiose type. It is a mental impairment of people that believe that they are somebody else. Outwardly, they appear normal in all other aspects, but are faulted in this area alone. I would guess that means alone. All right. Uh, I don't think Don Klein was a psychiatrist, psychologist, uh, mental health professional. He may have been. Uh, I don't think he was. I am not. I'm not uh, qualified to... Uh, um, uh, to diagnose anybody, uh, but I, but this caught my eye and I wanted to do a little more research on it just to find out about what this diagnosis is. And so we're going to get to that in just a little bit, but let's go back to number one of the three. The first thing is that Brushy was telling the truth, right? Is that possible that he actually was Billy the Kid? Well, many people believe, yes, that's that he absolutely, he absolutely was the kid. Um, for a variety of reasons, I don't. But I think the biggest challenge in that belief, you can take everything from after uh, 18, uh, July 15, 1881, and you can just push that aside because anti-horse thief association, Pinkertons, U.S. Deputy Marshal fighting in Cuba with the Rough Riders, I think. Like, it, none of that makes any difference. None, because whether it's true or not, and most of it's not, um, there's that doesn't prove that Brushy is Billy the Kid, right? It doesn't do anything to prove that he's the kid. In fact, if you want to use, um, you know, kind of his stories, as you know, as character reference, since most of them, or if not all, are completely unproven, then you'd say, oh, well, he lied about everything else. He's lying about this. But just separate all of that. Forget everything that happened after July 15. And then you go back to alias uh, Billy the Kid uh, by C.L. Sonishin, and you get Brushy's version that, of course, Billy Barlow was shot. Brushy runs in, has the big gunfight, gets shot in the head. Somebody drags him into the house. He uh, recovers, and then he leaves and goes and lives with the Yaki Indians. Pretty thin evidence there um, for anything to do with the night that uh, Billy was killed, uh, if you believe he was killed. And the, the biggest downfall is, uh, you know, what forensic evidence exists that Brushy Bill was Billy the Kid, and the only thing or things, two things that exist are two affidavits, which we've talked about in the past, one by Jose B. Montoya and one by Severo Gallegos. Uh, that's it. There isn't, there's no physical evidence. Brushy Bill didn't own anything that Billy the Kid had or was known to have. Um, I don't know that he would have. Maybe he was on the run with the Yaki Indians and he gave it all away or traded it or whatever it was stolen from him. Um, there's no letters that he wrote as Billy the Kid that he had in his possession. Um, there's no letters that were written to him as Billy the Kid prior to July 15, 1881 from other people, from Doc Skurlock, from uh, William Antrim, from like none of that stuff exists in Brushy's world. And so if you try to tie him back 
ev uh, on an evidentiary basis, it's pretty tough because there's no evidence. There's the, just the two affidavits. And the reason I say two, because the other three were from people that never met him before July 15, 1881. So he could have told a million people he was Billy the Kid and, and a thousand of them could have said, oh, yeah. So that those are not really relevant. But the two, uh, Montoya and Severo Gallegos, are really the only evidence that points to uh, whether Brushy Bill was Billy the Kid. Now, it's said that Brushy had a trunk and he had his uh, his teeth pulled out and put in a jar that was kept in the trunk. And it was said that Brushy walked around with these notebooks that he would write in. So apparently he was literate enough to write. Um, but the trunk and the teeth and the notebooks all vanished when Brushy died. Um, I don't know why. I don't know where they went. I don't even know if they ever existed, quite frankly, but they they don't exist anymore. So you're left on kind of a wing and a prayer if you want Brushy to really be Billy the Kid. You can believe it. I mean, you can believe in anything, but you you can't, there's not much to go back to in order for you to say that, yes, I have proof that this guy is. Uh, because even the stuff before July 15, you know, the younger days and the family and this wasn't my mother, it was my half aunt. And then this, like all of that stuff doesn't even add up. Um, it's really, really challenging. But again, some people believe it. That's cool. You're always welcome here if you do. So that's the first uh, option. The second option is that Brushy was lying about it intentionally crafted a story that he uh, knew was not true and and he followed that story for the rest of his life um, i guess there's a second and a half option which we'll discuss in a second but but that would have to be that for whatever reason he knew he was not billy the kid but he decided to lie about it and I guess somebody could do that. It seems like it would take a ton of energy to maintain that, uh, you know, to be able to maintain, you know, all the time in public and private and written correspondence, those kind of things that you were Billy the Kid, if you weren't, I, th I think it would be a significant challenge. But I know there are people that do it even nowadays and believe that they are, um, you know, they are somebody famous um, and and they're not. So that's the second option. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, why? Um, why would uh, Brushy Bill lie about it? Um, especially if he did all these other things, right? A guy who was so accomplished that rode with the Rough Riders and was a, uh, a, a, a marshal for hanging Judge Parker and, you know, rode <laughs> a cyclone and rounded horses up in Bolivia or wherever South America. Like, all, why? Why would you have to make up being Billy the Kid? You lived a pretty incredible life. If any, all all of that stuff, or even half of it's true, um, pretty pretty incredible. So I, the answer is I don't know. Maybe you're just bored. Uh, you know, you get to be ninety one or seventy one or whatever age. Um, you know, set probably seventy one to eighty years old. You get to be that age, and you uh, maybe you got nothing left to do, right? There's, there's no, <laughs> there's not good TV shows on in 1948 or 49 or, um, no, or you don't have a TV and if you've told everybody in town, your stories, and now you want to go national. I don't know. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but that's the second one that has to be taken into account. The second and a half will do that, uh, would be that William Morrison made the whole thing up and then got brushy as a dupe and said, Hey, I'm going to make you Billy the kid. That one, I don't believe. Um, I just don't believe that that happened. Morrison, uh, for, for whatever he was a salesman or whatever, uh, seemed to be a guy that really did have a love for history. He did have a, a, a familial connection to, uh, Lucian Maxwell, who was the father of Pete and Paulita Maxwell and the owner of the Maxwell land grant and, uh, owned Fort Sumner. Um, so I, I, that, that would seem pretty reckless to just throw a bomb in the middle of history, of a history that you portend to love. Um, so I, I don't think that's it. So what's the third option? Well, the third option is simply, whoops, <laughs> if, if it was simply, I would have hit the right button. The third option is simply this, that Brushy Bill had 
delusional paranosis grandiose type. Um, in other words, well, let's let's figure out what that is. Now, I've I've done some research. I've done a, a bunch of reading on this. I've never actually been able to find this specific diagnosis. Um, in other words, that that phrasing uh, would uh, would not normally be used. But I have found, uh, in uh, more modern terms, uh, what are called, uh, and this is a, an actual. Uh, a mental illness, and it is called delusions of grandeur. So, del and you can see this is from Healthline, healthline.com. Delusions of grandeur refers to a person's false belief that they are someone other than who they truly are, typically someone powerful or important. Delusions may be a sign of a mental health disorder. Delusions may also affect a person's sense of what is real and what is not. So before we go any further with that, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that for, for a minute. Option three is that brushy bill was not Billy the kid, but he absolutely believed that he was. And as you, as you, uh, just heard delusions may affect a person's sense of what is real and what is not. In other words, he could not be, uh, convinced that he wasn't, uh, there are a number of, uh, types of delusions, as I read. And again, I'm not diagnosing anyone. I'm offering you the information that I've gone and done the research for. I'm not telling you that Brushy had this or didn't. I'm offering it as one possibility. Um, many uh, types of mental health disorders classi classified as psychotic disorders can lead to delusions, schizophrenia, bipolar, dementia, delirium, major depressive disorder with psychotic features. Types of delusions of grandeur, and this is where it gets interesting. The person having the belief believes it to be true, even when the existing norm and other people know it to be untrue. So everybody around you could go, dude, you're not Billy the Kid. You're not this, you're not that, anything. But the person that has the disorder absolutely and positively believes that. Um, there are people, <laughs> not my family or anything like that, but there are people kind of in this universe that are that are like that that I, that I notice are like that. Um, the person having the delusion, number two, will not listen to any other viewpoints about the belief and will not consider change when evidence challenges the delusion. Um, so it doesn't matter what evidence you have. It doesn't matter what people say and how much they talk to you. If you're deep into delusions of grandeur, the, not not the the phrase oh you've got delusions of grandeur that you would use as an in insult, uh, but the actual psychiatric disorder, um, it, it, a se severe enough case you cannot be convinced otherwise that what you believe is untrue. Number three, the content of the delusion is impossible or implausible, and if Brushy Bill was born in. Uh, as Geneva Pittman says, uh, 1879, then it's impossible, not even implausible, it's impossible for Brushy to be Billy the Kid, because in 1879, Billy was probably 19, 18, 19, 20 years old, and Brushy would have been zero years old, <laughs> he would have been a toddler. So if you, you start to take these, uh, and number four is the delusion impacts the person's daily life. Now, we don't know whether it impacted Brushy's daily life. Anecdotally, we hear from Geneva Pittman that Brushy lived with her uh, between marriages for a couple of years at a time because he just couldn't take care of himself. Um, but I don't have any evidence of that. Just to, you, you have uh, you know stories that were uh, handed down uh, from one person to another. Um, the uh, other types or, or the delusions can take many forms. Being a famous person. A person with delusion, with a delusion of grandeur may actually believe that they are a famous person and that the real famous person is an imposter or decoy. Um, well, by 1948 or 49, the real person, if Brushy was not Billy the Kid, the real person was long since dead, at least we think. Um, so uh, that wouldn't mean Billy was an imposter or decoy, but Billy Barlow sure would have been a decoy or an imposter that uh, Garrett would have put forth um, that has, uh, uh, you know, in order to explain 
you know, what, why Billy would still be alive. So kind of uh, interesting stuff here. When you take this as one possibility, it's not proven. I'm, I don't know that you can diagnose people based on, um, well, based on no, we don't even have a, a real transcript of the tapes. So we don't know what Brushy said. We assume it's close to what Morrison said he said, but we don't really know. Um, but we don't have anything to go by. Uh, so I looked up uh, this also. This is very well health. Okay. And more about delusions of grandeur. These, this, this is what I found interesting. Uh, people who have grandiose delusions believe that they are superior to other people. These beliefs can give a person a sense of belonging and self-worth. So for people that don't belong, that, that feel like they're not connected to something, maybe that feel like they're out of control. This is a way for them to connect with others, to be someone superior, to be someone uh, that's uh, famous, that's well-known, that's sought after. Uh, and so you've got um, uh, you, you've got those options. Grandiose delusions are common, affecting about two thirds of people with bipolar disorder, and half the people with schizophrenia. I'm not diagnosing Brushy with any of those. I don't know that he had him. Um, but examples of grand grandiose delusions: special powers, being famous, being wealthy, thinking you're God or have spiritual uh, powers, believing you can cure. Cancer, grandiose delusions can lead to risky or dangerous behaviors. Uh, not any evidence whatsoever that Brushy was involved in any sort of risky or dangerous behaviors. I don't believe that at all. So um, that uh, that part of it would be out. And then finally, in Wikipedia, uh, you can uh, get a little bit more uh, information here. And uh, it just talks about it's just more of the, you know, the disease epidemiology. Um, uh, grandiosity, delusions of grandeur, remains the second most common delusion after persecutory, persecutory delusions. And that's you being persecuted. Somebody's out to get me. Somebody's, you know, pu pulling the buttons, pushing the strings. You, you sometimes see this a lot uh, when you, when people talk about the government, they have persecute, persecutory delusions that the government is doing all these things behind their back and to them. Um, uh, which they might be, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't think that the government controls every facet of our lives um, as, you know, right now, as somebody's listening in from, you know, NSA or something like that to our broadcast here. Um, so uh, very, very common delusions of grandeur, uh, grandeur, especially as connected to um, other uh, mental illnesses um, and which at least two researchers, Gail Cooper and Donald Klein, have uh, brought forward that they believe Brushy had had uh, some sort of mental illness. So you have three things. And if you want the truth, right, not my truth, if you want the truth, then the best thing to do would be eliminate two of those and be left with the third. There, there can't really be anything else. He, he was Billy, he wasn't and he was lying, or he wasn't and he really believed he was. I mean, that's kind of it, right? That, that's the, uh, the simplistic way of diagnosing a problem. So you have to get rid of two to be left. <laughs> Make sure I don't have the wrong finger up here. Uh, you have to get rid of two to be left with one. So which two are you going to throw out? I'm, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to ask you if you're if you're a free thinker and you want to figure this conundrum out once and for all, um, then you would uh, do well to spend a little bit of time. <coughs> pardon me. Spend a little bit of time uh, trying to think through this. Was brushy Bill Roberts really Billy the Kid? Is there proof, uh, unimpeachable proof that he was? That's one thing. Was Brushy Bill Roberts not Billy the Kid? And did he create this whole elaborate lie on purpose? In other words, purposely knowing he was lying and carrying it forward and then bringing, uh, uh, bringing Morrison in and Morrison bringing Sonishin in and then, you know, bringing these other people into his world. Did he go about the countryside of Lincoln and had he 
gone and done the reading and studying and did he get cues from Morrison about the things that Billy should have known? Like, did he really do all of this stuff purposely knowing that not one single shred of it was true? Um, and did he have the capacity to pull something like that off? Because even today there are a, a good number of people that believe that Brushy Bill Roberts was in fact Billy the Kid. So you have to take that one into account. And then the third one is, was Brushy actually suffering from a mental illness? Um, and was this something that was uncontrollable? In other words, did, did the mental illness tell him you're Billy the Kid or you're a member of the James Gang or the Daltons or the Young, you know, whatever. I mean, the James Gang is the one that was in the newspaper. But in any event, did did he have these delusions? Did it focus him in one area and then another? And then was because he was so certain that he actually was Billy the Kid, he believed it. He, he knew it, even though the rest of us knew he wasn't. Did, did, was it that deeply rooted that he could convince somebody like William Morrison, C.L. Sonishin, um, Morrison's workmate, um, the guy who's, uh, I can't remember his name now, the guy whose interview we read a couple of weeks back. In other words, could he have brought everyone into that story because he was so convincing because he really believed it to be true? There was an episode of a pretty funny one of Seinfeld, if any of you are old enough to, <laughs> to have watched that. It's still on in uh, syndication. And Jerry's dating a cop, a female cop. And he goes to the station and they have the polygraph uh, guy there. And, and uh, they mentioned something about the show Melrose Place, which was a Fox show from I don't know, 20 years ago plus. And, uh, and Jerry goes, no, I don't watch it. I've never seen it. And the, and his girlfriend goes, uh, it's okay. You can admit it if you haven't. He goes, no, I haven't. But Jerry, you, it's pretty clear that Jerry has, he's getting nervous. So they're going to hook him up to the polygraph. And so he goes to meet with George and he goes, George, you got to help me beat this thing. And can it be done? And, uh, George says, that's like, you know, t telling Picasso, I think, teach me to paint like you, like I can't teach you. And so anyway, as Jerry walks out, resigned to the fact that he's going to be found out for watching <laughs> Melrose Place, uh, George stops him and says, Jerry, just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> and that's kind of where we are potentially with Brushy here is maybe he didn't lie. Maybe he believed it because he had an illness that forced him to believe that. And he had to see that through to his bitter end. Um, incidentally, in reading uh, the uh, uh, the treatments, although I don't know that you know anybody would have bothered to get Brushy any treatment, um, uh, in patients with schizophrenia, grandiose and religious delusions are found to be the least susceptible to cognitive behavioral interventions. Um, so in other words, uh, if you have schizophrenia that causes these delusions of grandeur uh, and, and you have religious or grandiose delusions, you're, you're in a tough spot because there's not really much in the way of treatment. There might be some... Uh, uh, some drugs today, but they would have been significantly less and less uh, effective drugs way back when. Um, and uh, there, I wanted to, to talk about one other piece. Da, da, da. Oh, uh, it has been noted that the presence of grandiose delusions in people with at least grammar or high school education was greater than less educated persons. Um, so uh, did Brushy go to school? Did he get a grammar school education? Did he go to high school? I, 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 don't, I don't really even know, to be honest with you. I'm sure somebody does. Um, but, uh, well, if you, if you believe the common narrative, no, because Brushy was you know, on a, a major cattle drive to Kansas in, when he was 14 years old. Um, but uh, but if, you know, if anybody has the backstory on that, you know, did, he go to, did he get any education? People with education are more prone to grandiose delusions than people that have no education. Um, did, could Brushy write? Could he not write? Could he read? Could he not read? I mean, it's a big mess. Uh, we've looked at Morrison's letters that said he could not. People have shown examples of he could. Uh, so 
you know, it's just a tangled mess. And uh, well, you can make from that what you will. So what is your diagnosis? <laughs> Nobody cares what mine is, right? It doesn't really matter uh, what I believe. What's more important is what you believe. Um, and, uh, and, and can we get to the truth here? There's other things going on that are going to get us to the truth. There's things that have gone on that have gotten us to the truth, but you know, those are not for me to say. Um, but, but to, to get to the point where you have a, uh, a satisfactory belief based on whatever you use as evidence or fact, um, can you get there by eliminating two of those three options? I think I can, but I'd be uh, more interested to hear from you. So the way to do that is you can email the show at billythekidridesagain at gmail.com. Happy to always hear from you there. You can, of course, leave a comment. Um, and by the way, you could also uh, like, not like, you could also subscribe. And then somewhere over here, thereabouts, you can hit the like button. You can also share the video. Um, you can become a member. Um, we've got a lot of extra content behind the scenes stuff, um, uh, extra uh, videos, uh, some documentation that uh, we've provided. To just hit the join tab. I think it's five bucks a month or five ninety nine or something. You can join for a month. If you don't feel like it's for you, you can stop. Um, but uh, lots of additional good stuff there. Live members chat uh, once a month as well there. And uh, But yeah, I'd love to hear from you and hear what you think about Brushy Bill Roberts. Uh, somebody said uh, to me earlier, you know, I'd love for you to have a conversation with this person about Brushy Bill. And I said, I'd love to, I'd love to. I think that whether you're a Miller person, John Miller, whether you're a Brushy person or whether you're a Pat Garrett story person or, or Walk Along Smith or Luis Jaramillo or Escape to uh, wherever, you know, whatever your belief is, if you can just be civil, uh, then we could, we could have a good and productive discussion. Um, it's when people start with the name calling and, and being condescending and uh, and just coming into it like a bull in a china shop, being closed minded. It's kind of pointless at that. We don't learn anything. All we learn is that one person wants to steamroll the other person. So I'm not really interested in that. I'd love to, uh, you know, put a put a fine point and finish on this thing sometime before I'm dirt. So let's do that. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me on All Things Billy the Kid. The Big Monday Night Show will be back. We uh, plan to have our friend Bloody James Townsend <laughs> uh, as our co-host again. Uh, if you haven't seen David Thomas's stage play, The Trial of Billy the Kid, just uh, I'll link it right here at the end of this episode. You can go watch that and see uh, what Billy's trial may have looked like. And of course, got plenty of other videos and tons of footage to edit and get through. So um, more good stuff coming up. Thanks so much for joining me again. Happy Thanksgiving week. Appreciate all of you. Have a great day. I'm out.